Hi guys, welcome to today's video and welcome to another WWE reaction. This video is recommended by GM Gamer and he said react to entrance themes that didn't fit the WWE wrestler by WrestleMania. WWE wrestlers who had theme songs that didn't fit their character. Number 10, Go. Yoshi Tatsu. Even though Yoshi Ooh. Tatsu was over with his happy go lucky baby face act, it was time for a change by the time WWE got to 2011. Yeah. During Yoshi's feud with Tyson Kidd on the game show format of NXT, he would debut a new, much more serious persona. This persona would see him debut a new look and a new theme song. To match this new persona, it was vital that WWE work to create a memorable theme and it needed to perfectly capture what Tatsu's new persona was all about. Okay, I have a question. Uh, do you think that every time a wrestler changes from babyface to heel or from heel to babyface that they have to actually change the theme song? I, I don't know if that is really necessary if the theme song doesn't really represent a kind of persona. Like, it's not... I don't know. That's my opinion. Let me know in the comments, but maybe this video is going to change my mind. Unfortunately, WWE completely butchered this. Things started off promising as a new theme started with a new intro that had a legitimate feel to it. Okay, you have another oh, that sounds cool. Like samurai, you know, serious. Then, for whatever reason, the new theme awkwardly cut to Tatsu's old theme that literally sounded like a dance track. No! Uh, what are you doing? Uh, oh my god, like, no, big no. This is, this sounds like a clown. Like, da, 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 da. like, does not work at all. You cannot be here with that song. Okay, uh, a new character now I get was it. just dead on arrival. <laughs> yeah. Number nine, Eric Young. Rest in peace. The fans were elated when Eric is Young showed up young? in NXT. Young was one of the standout talents in TNA, and over his celebrated tenure in the company, Young portrayed various roles. Young was able to deliver both serious and comedic roles, and he managed to excel in these over several years. Okay. Due to his versatility, WWE fans had high hopes for Young, as in theory, they could throw the former TNA World Champion into any role, and he'd be able to deliver the goods. That's good. Young would debut in May of 2016, confronting former TNA star and current NXT champion Smoa Joe. Whilst it was great to see Young finally in the WWE, his initial theme did a huge disservice to his presentation. The theme song was the definition of generic, and it didn't yeah, exactly portray to the generic, audience that like, Young was a main event star that they should actually care about. Thankfully, they would eventually alter the no theme emotion. song for Young's full-time run in the company, okay. and the second theme song was a considerable improvement. Okay. Number eight, Billy Kidman. It's a common. I don't know any of these people. Consensus that Billy Kidman had one of the most underrated themes in WWE. Kidman would debut his popular theme song at the 2002 Survivor Series, and it was instantly established as one of the most popular theme songs of the Ruthless Aggression era. Whilst fans still rave about the theme song today, the song ultimately didn't remotely fit Kidman's character, both as a heel and as a babyface. The song even had some disturbing lyrics, such as. All of a sudden you start in the field sleepy, but in the streets when you doze off, you wake up with your clothes off. The shame feeling so lost. Whoa. Oh my and it god. And I mean, it doesn't take a genius to work out what these questionable lyrics are implying, and it's nope. baffling to think that the WWE nope. approved of this song for a babyface. Yeah. Number seven, Drew McIntyre. Finally, Upon making someone his full-time debut on the main roster, WWE Duh. let the audience know that Drew McIntyre was a big deal. Vince McMahon would handpick McIntyre both on and off Bro, screen guys. to be the future face of the company, and it's well established that. Bro, guys, I have to pause here like for a second. Like, if Drew looking like this walked right past me, if that's how you say it in English, I would not even look twice. Today, if Drew walks past me, the way he looks today. I would, I would melt. I would die. I, would, <laughs> I, I would not exist anymore. Men can age so well, like fine wine, raw. Add like that rough beard, rough hair, chest in the hair, like that. That is it, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A bit more muscles, a bit of tan, a bit of sweat. Did I just do this after saying sweat? That disgusting. Blech. McIntyre wasn't quite ready for this type of role in the company. Nevertheless, WWE did the right thing by starting McIntyre off no, in the mid card. No. His in ring work was passable, no. yet his character and presentation were lacking in any substance. McIntyre's first theme song certainly wasn't helping things, as it was generic and flat and didn't represent the okay, young prodigy the that WWE was portraying. 
Well, a golden opportunity tonight for the... I feel like the it's similar to what we have today. Of course, today like the interest is better, but like the longer the song keeps going, we still have this uh, beat, right? Chosen one. The infamous theme song would be used for one of the biggest nights of McIntyre's career, that being the 2009 TLC pay-per-view. At this pay-per-view, McIntyre would defeat John Morrison to become Intercontinental ah, Champion. Thankfully, WWE would eventually champion. discover the perfect theme song for him as he would begin to use the track known as Broken Dreams. Mm -hmm. It's not hyperbole to say that this is one of the greatest theme songs of all time and WWE hit a home run in finding a theme song that was the right fit for him. It's okay. hardly a surprise that fans are still yeah. clamoring to see the theme song make a return as it's still oh, insanely song, popular yeah. with the WWE audience. Number 6, Triple H. By late 1997, H. Triple H had oh, ditched the, the blue blood gimmick in favor of the DX persona. These gimmicks were a stark contrast, yet yeah. even still, WWE was still having the game users Hunter Hearst Helmsley theme, Ode to Joy. Triple H would come to the ring Wait, on the October 27th, the, the, the 1997 Prince? edition of Raw to face Goldust, and Triple H was in one? full DX mode. The game would come to the ring with Shawn Michaels and China, and it was almost as if WWE had accidentally played the wrong theme song as it didn't remotely fit. The Generation X, and if anything, they are becoming more degenerate with every week. Oh my god, get me out of here. This is so cringe. Oh my god. <laughs> like, what? That, that doesn't go together. <laughs> Thank God they don't have it anymore. Like, this does not like red carpet, Prince Manor, you know, the queen and whatever. And then like, <laughs> like no. <laughs> they quickly learned that this theme song wasn't going to work. So Triple H no. would eventually come out to the popular you, DX you theme. And the classical theme would be retired forever. Yeah, Number five, God. Evolution. Evolution, evolution are well known for being one of the most successful stables knew. of all time, I'll, yet it took I'll some took time for WWE to perfect their presentation. Okay. When the group would begin to use a collective theme song in the summer of 2003, they didn't have the line in the sand out of the recording studio, so instead they used a track known as Evolve. Evolve basically had the okay. beats of Line in the Sand without the lyrics, and when it's it came okay. to this particular song, the lyrics make all the difference. Nah. The interesting thing about this song is that the song was officially considered to be Randy Orton's second theme, and was even used for Orton for his appearance on the Raw 2 video game release. Oh, okay. Thankfully, the Line in the Sand song would soon surface, and this was the ideal soundtrack to represent the definitive stable of the Ruthless Aggression era. Number 4, The B Team. The what B team to the are often team? forgotten about tank team, and they're oh, mostly known Dallas for their association with them. and the Miz them. in one picture, just like today, Uncle Howdy and the Miz. Oh, <laughs> they had a beef already from back then. Interesting. Miz and for having an elite theme song. Their initial theme song was titled Battle Scars, and to say this song was outstanding is an understatement. The song was tailor-made for a main eventer, and unfortunately, it didn't fit the vibe that Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel were going for. WWE decided to ditch their theme song insanely quick, and the duo were quickly given a new theme song that failed to stand out. In a disappointing move, WWE never decided to reuse the song. The song was perfection in terms of being ready-made for a huge name, yet WWE just retired the song completely. Now, that song is several years old, and it would be welcomed if they reintroduced the song for a wrestler, as it could seriously take the presentation of the right wrestler to the next level. Number 3, Samoa Joe. The buzz surrounding Samoa Joe's WWE debut was insane, and when he eventually debuted in late 2015, all anyone could focus on was the horrendous theme song that they'd given him. Oh no. The first few notes were great, and then the song went off into a crazy direction with bizarre music that didn't fit anyone on the roster, never mind someone with as much star power as Samoa Joe. The theme was scolded by fans online. Whoa, what the hell was that? <laughs> what was that? Jazz, brother, smooth. The theme was scolded by fans online, with some even saying that it ruined his debut. Eventually, WWE Definitely would edit the theme song, and his second theme guy. was a vast improvement. According to Joe himself, during an appearance on Busted Open Radio, he worked with the producers as a second theme to get. If it you looked with... like Pink Panther, I think that that theme song could fit you. Yeah. Right. 
Number two, Randy Orton. Randy Orton. This fire burns is mostly known for being the first WWE theme song for CM Punk. The theme song is so popular that as things stand, the WWE release of the track on Spotify has over 100 million streams. It's common knowledge that before Punk used the theme song, they would attempt to make it Randy Orton's new primary theme. Orton debuted the song on a random episode of SmackDown in 2006, and although the song was epic as ever, it just didn't fit Orton in any way. How? Welcome back to See? Our nation's capital, the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. A big okay, it's night. too hardcore, the song. It is... For Randy, it is too hard. I don't know. Mm, you really like see even the song needs to fit. Like if it was Bo Dallas as Uncle Howdy entering with that theme song, I would say yes. You know, I even with CM Punk, I don't know. It's too hardcore. That should be for someone who is like an even bigger savage than Randy Orton. Like I don't know. And it should be offered to WWE for trying something new, but this was Punk's theme, and it was hard to imagine anyone else on the roster yeah, using that theme song. Yeah, you can't do song. that, brother. And number one, Roman that. Reigns. When Roman Reigns returned to WWE as a heel in 2020, everything about his persona and presentation one. changed. Reigns was now a legitimate villain on the roster, and all the nonsensical, like borderline, <laughs> childish aspect of his babyface act were dead and buried. Reigns would debut a new attire and he would expand his moveset, yet there was one thing that was holding Reigns back, and that was his theme song. Reigns was still using his babyface theme song that he'd been using since 2014, and it wasn't suitable for him as a heel. Nope. WWE were aware of this, and they got work on a new theme for Reigns, and this would eventually debut in 2021, and this reception was overwhelmingly positive. The so song captured the essence of the head of the table persona, and it's widely regarded as the finest work of Def Rebel. But there you have it, folks. WWE wrestlers who had theme songs hey, that didn't fit their the character. Be sure to leave your comments down below. And I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content. I don't even know the old one. <laughs> That's mean. You showed everything except number one song? Well, I guess it's that bad. <laughs> it is that bad that we're not going to even let you hear it. The shift in tone in Yoshi Tatsu's theme song is flipping hilarious. <laughs> that was the worst. That was, should be number one, bro. Drew McIntyre's first theme song was like a generic default theme song for your CAW and WWE games. Oh, yo, yo. Samoa Joe's first theme song started off with a menacing manner and switched to pick your character. <laughs> Choose your character. Uh, this Fire Burns is a great song. Uh, didn't even know it. Fun fact, before Punk's main roster debut in 2006, This Fire Burns was also used... Ah, this the, this Fire Burns song was also used for the theme of Judgment Day PPV on that same year. That's not nice. Like, keep using the same song for different wrestlers. It's not a representation then. There is nothing unique about it. See, Drew McIntyre's Broken Dreams needs to come back. Okay, I'm gonna try to hear this. I need to hear this. Oh, look, even says McIntyre brings back Broken Dreams theme in WWE Clash of the Castle 2000. Oh my god, what a cool song! It's so emotional. Ouch, ouch, ouch. It's really, I don't think you heard me, uh, the, heard the song because it's copyrighted, so I had to mute it. But it's really good. This theme is perfect for the current heel storyline of Drew that he is going for, honestly. Yeah, I think this really is good. But also I like that he is giving his uh, heritage um, a space and a place, a representation uh, per se, because it is who he is. It is a part of him, his nationality, where he came from. So... And it's so fitting as well with the sword and like being a Scottish guy, you know, like it, it is really good. But that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Check out my Patreon for more WWE reactions and see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Bye!